Hi, my name is Jordan Robbins. I am a CC student and I am enrolled, currently enrolled in a uh, Foundations of Music Theory class. And so I've been working on analyzing music and I'm just going to kind of walk you through that today. I'm going to also be explaining how music connects with uh, the Christian faith and how, also how it connects with just arts and math. All right. So now as we get started, one of the first things in analyzing music, and this music piece is actually, um, this piece is actually called There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. So I'm just going to be analyzing this for you a little bit and kind of walking you through how to do that. So what I like to do, the first steps in, in analyzing pieces of music is to first off, you need to label each note. So in order to label each note, you need to know what equals what it equals on each line. So what well, I remember it as good boys do fine always. So if I use that method, I would do good boys. So I know this has to be B and this is good boys do, so D. And then, so now I finished this bottom and now we're gonna move back up to the top. And for the top, an easy way to remember it is every good boy does fine. And also I just remember just as common knowledge is that this is C, this line right here is C. And obviously what's right under C is gonna be B. So here's another B. Also another important thing to remember is that this is the, uh, is the note of, this is in the key of B flat. So, and we know that because of both of these flats right here. And because this is the B, this is a B flat, and because this is an E flat, we need to mark every B and every E as a, with a flat. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Add a flat here and a flat here. Now, we don't have enough information to figure out what this is yet, but we know that, okay, so I've also created a chart down here on the bottom to kind of help us solve and ex just to keep me organized with my thoughts. So we know we have a B flat here. So what I like to do is I like to circle the B flat down here and I also have a D. So I circle the D right here. But in order to make this um, kind of make sense and to organize this, I will need, we need three notes and we need to have a note, a blank, a note, a blank, and a note. And right now we just have a note, a blank, and a note. But in order to find the last note that we're missing, we need to kind of dissect this a little bit more and kind of see what we're looking for. So our next step is going to be to find both of these. So this note right here, if this top line is an E, we know that this needs to be a, a D. So this is a D and this is a, this is gonna be an uh, good boys do fine, this is gonna be an F. So now I have a B flat, a D, and an F. So I'm gonna go ahead and circle the F. So now we know that a B flat, if it starts on B flat, it's going to be a one. So this is gonna be in a key signature of one. But our next step is going to be, need to be find like the fraction that we used. And in order to do that, we need to kind of, we need to like solve for, we need to know that the B flat is on the bottom. And so because it's on the bottom, it's going to be a 5-3. Because the B flat is right here on the bottom and it's the first one we start with. So now we've figured out that this is a one and a 5-3. Now let's move to our next one. Our next one is going to start on a F, no, it's gonna be a B. This is a B flat, and this is also a B flat. And we can go ahead and just mark both of these two because these are both B flats. These are all the same, they're just different note values. And so now we're gonna move up here and we know this is a D because we've solved these. These are both the same. And this is going to be an F. So now, this is pretty much the same thing here. We have the same notes here, and we have the same notes here. So this is pretty close to the same thing. So we're gonna need to know that this is also going to be an I, or a one, five, 
three. All right, now let's move on to the next one. The next one is going to be, this is, we can just go ahead and label it an E, G, and then we know this is a B flat. Oh, this is also, this is also an E flat because we know that every E is a flat and every B is a flat. We've learned that because we're in the B flat scale. B flat. All right, now we have everything labeled. We need to go and we need to look for what has a B flat, an E flat, and a G. And so I have this chart here and I find it really helpful in order to solve what I need to look for, what I'm looking for. So here we have a B flat here, but we don't have an E flat or G right here. But I find that we have an E flat, a G, and a B flat all right here. So I can go ahead and just, I'll circle these. Here's an E flat, a G, and a B flat. So these are all connected. And for here, the E flat is on the bottom. So, so we know the E flat needs to be a, a four. So it's gonna be a one, five, a four. All right. And now our next thing is we're going to need to find the fraction. And the, fra the way we find the fraction is that because this is an E flat, this is going to need to be a, um, let's see, this is going to need to be a, um, a six, four. It's going to be a six, four because the E flat is where it's at. It's here. All right. And now we don't necessarily need to solve for this one because we've already done that here. So we know that the last one was an I, five, three, and they were both the same. So we just keep it the same. Now let's move on to the next one. Okay. Um, let's, let's, let's go ahead. I'm running a little low on time. So let's go to our final thing. And something interesting here is that um, there's only two here and normally we have three, but there's only two and sometimes the composer has the freedom to either add or sometimes even subtract. Sometimes it's too many notes and sometimes there's not, there's not enough. So here we see there is G, B, fine. This is an F and this is a C. And so now we look down here, go back to our chart and we see that, well, this one has an F and a C. So we're gonna go and use this V right here. So we know this is gonna to need to be a V or a five, it's a five. And then we're gonna realize that we still need an A. So we're missing the A. So we just kind of imply the A as if it's already there. Cause a composer really has the freedom to add this here. And so we know We know that this is going to be a F C This is going to be a this is gonna be an F. We circle the F here, we circle the C, and here's also an A. So we have this here and this here. And because the F is on the bottom, it's going to be a 5-3. All right, now, as I bring this into a conclusion, I just want to kind of organize some of the thoughts I have that um, I'm basically, basically just gonna be telling you how harmony and everything relates to music and it relates to the Bible and how it also sort of just relates to just all the things I've kind of been talking to about in this score analysis. So I, I've learned that harmony is a just proportion of sounds. So we've learned a lot about this in our math and motion study. And I think that Godfrey um, Le Lebanon, it's, and I think Godfrey Lebanon explains it very well. And he's saying, he said that he believed that there was a pre-established harmony in the universe. So as we gain an understanding and analyze music, 
uh, composers create harmonious sounds that are pleasing to the ear. Our enjoyment of music helps us to recognize God, our God, our true composer, and who has created the entire universe to be filled with harmony. Harmony links math and music, to, music and harmony links math and music together, and it helps us to enjoy our Creator. Art should direct our attention to God, and the harmony found in the scores we just analyzed allows us to examine God through worshipful music. So the patterns of notes bring harmony together, and harmony is the fingerprint of God, and we can find and we can find it, and we can also create it, as we've seen here. So as I come to a conclusion, I just want to leave you with with this Bible verse. And it says that it's, I'm going to read it from Psalm 29. And it says, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the, the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, and the God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. So, what this is saying is that harmony and music and everything just connect and we can use a lot we can use worship to just express how we feel towards God and it helps us just to stay focused on him and to just ultimately uh, just bring us together or connect just uh, just brings it just brings harmony to our life so um, thank you